y'all welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is stephanie and i appreciate y'all stopping by are you as ready as i am to get into the halloween spirit if so today i am going to show you these six spooky cute halloween decor diy projects that are perfect for adding a touch of frightful fun to your home please don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more diy inspiration let's go ahead and grab our crafting supplies and get started Jumping right into project number one. For this project, I use this five and a half by seven and a half inch piece of wood from this wood economy bag from Hobby Lobby and one of these six inch wooden table legs I picked up at Lowe's. I started by removing the screw from the end of the table leg and used wood glue to attach it to the center of the wood piece and set it aside to dry for a few hours. I also used one of these six inch, eight inch and 10 inch bamboo rings from this multi-pack that I got from Amazon. I have put these in my Amazon storefront and I will link that in the description box below. I used wood glue to attach the eight inch ring to the top of the 10 inch ring and used a clamp to hold them together long enough for the glue to set up. I then used more wood glue to attach the six inch ring to the top of the eight inch ring, again using a clamp to hold them together and set the whole piece aside to dry for a few hours. Once the glue on the rings was completely dry, I took a small drill bit and drilled a hole through the bottom of the 10 inch ring right in the center. Next, I used Minwax Wood Finish Semi-Transparent in the color ebony to stain the base and bamboo rings with one coat and set it aside to dry for a couple of hours. After all the pieces were completely dry, I used a small screw to attach the rings to the center of the top of the table leg. Here is how the piece looked once it was completely assembled. Next, I took some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree and used hot glue to attach it to the bottom of the 10 inch ring. I then repeated this step to attach more Spanish moss to the bottoms of the other two rings. I apologize that I was unable to get the whole project in frame due to my tripod being a little too short, but here is how the piece looks with all the moss in place. Next, I used three of these fake crows that I picked up in this six pack from Amazon. Again, these are in my Amazon storefront that is gonna be linked below. I cut the wire pieces from the bottom of one of the crow's feet and then used hot glue to attach it in the center at the bottom of the 10 inch ring. I then repeated this step to attach the other two crows to the other two rings with each one of them positioned just a little bit differently and this one is finished. I have a love of crows and ravens, so I really do love how this topiary turned out. It's slightly on the taller side, so I will probably be using this as a focal piece on my entryway table. Moving on to project number two. For this project, I used two of these wood pieces that are about five and a half inches long and about one and a half inch wide from this wood economy pack from Hobby Lobby. I started by using wood glue to attach the two pieces together to create a longer base. I made sure to go in with a damp paper towel to remove any of the excess glue that came out around the ends of the wood pieces. I then used two large clamps to hold the two pieces together until the glue set up and set it aside to dry for a few hours. When the glue was dry, I used Minwax wood finish in the color red oak to stain the entire wooden base. Next, I used one of these small wall shelves that come in a two-pack from Dollar Tree. I filled the four holes with some paintable wood filler and allowed it to fully dry, then sanded it down so that it was smooth. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint the shelf with one good coat. Next, I used some of these silver 13 16 eye hooks from Lowe's. I placed two of these eye hooks on the top edge of the wood piece right above where the holes were before I filled them in. Once I had the eye hook started in the wood, I found it easier to use a pair of pliers to screw it the rest of the way in. I went into Cricut Design Space and found this pre-made I put a spell on you design and cut it out in some matte white vinyl, then applied it to the front of the wood piece. Next, I used one of these square canvas prints from Dollar Tree and removed the hanger from the back. I then used a flathead screwdriver and some pliers to carefully remove the canvas from the frame. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and gave the frame two good coats. Once the paint was dry, I took two more of the eye hooks 
and screwed them into the top inside edge of the frame about one and seven sixteenths of an inch so that they lined up with the eye hooks on the wooden sign. I used two of these metal chain pieces that I had in my stash to attach the sign to the canvas frame. I removed all but one link of the chains and used a pair of pliers to attach the bottom parts of the chains to the eye hooks on the top of the sign. Then I connected the top parts of the chains to the eye hooks on the frame, again using a pair of pliers to secure the chains in place. To finish up this project, I attached the frame to the center of the wooden base using hot glue to secure it in place. I think this one turned out really cute and I love that I'm going to be able to switch out the little hanging signs for the different holidays and seasons so that this can be a year-round decor piece. Up next is project number three. For this project, I used one of these spider-shaped candy holders from Dollar Tree and used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint it with two good coats. Once the paint was completely dry, I took some of this cream eyeshadow in the color Gold Rush and using my finger, rubbed it across all of the high points of the spider to give it a more aged and antiqued look. Now, I wanted to use Rub and Buff and Bronze for this step, but none of the stores around my area except Hobby Lobby carry it, and it was Sunday, so they were closed, but I am happy with the way the eyeshadow ended up looking. It gives it an aged look with a little bit of a shimmer. I also used one of these orb-shaped terrariums from Dollar Tree. I removed the hanger and used some painter's tape to cover the hole in the side of the orb and the hole from where the hanger was removed. Next, I took some satin Mod Podge and poured it into a smaller container. I wanted to tint the orb black, so I took some red, blue, and green food coloring and added several drops of each into the Mod Podge and mixed it up really well, adding more drops of food coloring as needed to achieve the color I wanted. The food coloring does thin out the Mod Podge, so there was no need for me to add any extra water to get the consistency that I was looking for. Once I was happy with the color, I poured the Mod Podge mixture into the front of the terrarium and twisted it around in order to coat the entire inside of the orb, adding more of the mixture as needed. After I had the inside completely coated, I poured out the excess Mod Podge and carefully removed the tape then place the orb upside down on a paper plate to drain any excess liquid and to dry for several hours. Here is how the orb looked once it was completely dry. It's a dark semi-transparent color which is exactly what I wanted. Next I used some of these color changing LED wire lights from the Family Dollar and fed them through the hole in the top of the terrarium where the hanger used to be. Once I had all the lights inside the orb, I used a small dab of hot glue on the side of the hole to secure the lights in place. I then applied some hot glue around the opening of the orb and placed it down inside the dish of the spider, making sure the hole where I secured the lights was facing the back of the spider. I added a small dab of hot glue on the bottom of the spider to secure the light string so that it would be mostly hidden underneath the spider. To help hide the battery box, I cut off the plastic loop at the top, then gathered all the excess cord up underneath it and placed the box and the wire inside the head groove underneath the spider and used hot glue to secure it in place. I used one of these command picture hanging strips to hang up the spider sconce and this project is finished. I am thrilled with the way these spider sconces turned out. I think they are going to be the perfect addition to my entryway this spooky season. On to project number four. For this project, I used one of these hanging Halloween signs from Dollar Tree and removed the first and last ghost from the ribbon. Once I had the ghost removed, I went ahead and removed all of the paper from both ghosts. Next, I used some miter shears to cut off one of the ghost's little hands so that it looked like it was holding out only one hand. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the front and sides of both ghosts with two good coats. When the paint was dry, I used a pencil to sketch out the faces of both ghosts so that it looked like they were facing one another and then used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint in the faces. I also used one of these 9 inch by 7 inch rustic hanging plaques that I got on sale at Hobby Lobby. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and painted the background of the plaque with one good coat. 
Next, I used one of the small wooden hearts out of this wooden shape assortment from Dollar Tree and used Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin to give the front of the heart two good coats. Once all the paint was completely dry, I placed the two ghosts on the plaque so that they were facing each other and used hot glue to attach them to the plaque. I cut off the very end of a wooden skewer stick and used hot glue to attach it right above the hand of the ghost on the left. Then to finish this one up, I used hot glue to attach the orange heart right above the point on the skewer stick to look like a balloon and that's it for this one. How cute is this sign? I think it's just the sweetest and is going to look so cute in our bedroom this spooky season. Moving right along to DIY number 5. For this project, I used one of these pink flamingos from Dollar Tree. I started by removing the silver stakes and use painter's tape along with a plastic bag to cover up the body of the flamingo, leaving only its head exposed. I then took it outside and gave the head of the flamingo a couple coats of Rust-Oleum gloss spray paint in the color cranberry. Once the paint was completely dry, I used more painter's tape and half of a plastic bag to cover up the head. I then took it back outside and gave the body a couple coats of Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte Spray Paint in the color black. After all the spray paint was completely dry, I used Waverly Chalk Paint in the colors Snow White, Ink, and Maze to add the details back into the eyes and the beak. To make the feathers, I used this feather boa that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I cut the string off of one end and wrapped it around the base of the flamingo's neck to measure out about how much I needed and cut it to size. I then used hot glue to attach it around the base of the neck and fluffed it up a little bit. To finish this project, I simply put the stakes into place and this flamingo vulture is ready to be placed in my flower pot out by the stairs. I love these little guys so much that I made two and I plan on picking up some more of the flamingos from Dollar Tree next summer so I can create a whole flamingo vulture committee next Halloween. And last but not least, Project number six. For this project, I used this Halloween hanging sign from Dollar Tree and removed the three signs from the ribbon. I then removed the paper and 3D embellishments from the fronts of all three signs. I also went ahead and filled in the two holes on the top sign with some paintable wood filler and sanded it down so that it was smooth. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and painted the fronts, backs, and sides of all three signs. I used a Cricut machine to cut out the words, you say witch like it's a bad thing, in some matte white vinyl and applied them to the front of each of the three signs. Next, I used one of these plastic bowls from this two pack that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I used the tip of my hot glue gun and just a little bit of pressure to melt a hole through the bottom of the bowl in the center, just big enough so that this crooked tree branch that I found outside would fit down in it snugly. The tree branch I used is roughly 18 inches long. Once I had the hole melted in the bowl, I applied a little bit of hot glue on the bottom end of the tree branch and placed it down inside the hole just far enough so that it was nice and sturdy. I did go back once the hot glue had set up and applied more hot glue around the branch on the top of the bowl and then around the end of the branch inside the bowl for added security. Next, I used one roll of this wired edge burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. I measured out about how long the piece of burlap ribbon needed to be to make the bristles of the broom and cut it to size. I then used this piece of ribbon to cut off several more pieces of ribbon. I did not measure each one exact. Since I wanted the broom to look a little more organic, I cut some pieces shorter and some pieces longer. Once I had all the ribbon pieces cut, I used hot glue to attach them to the branch about a half inch or so above the bowl to create the bottom of the broom. I continued to add the pieces of the ribbon around the branch until the plastic bowl was completely covered. Next, I took some jute twine and tied it around the branch just below where the ribbon was glued on and wrapped it around several times until I had all the top ends of the ribbon covered and it looked nice and neat. I then secured the end of the twine with a dab of hot glue to hold it in place. 
Then I went around the bottom of the broom and bent the ends of the ribbons so that they looked nice when the broom was setting on the table. I used hot glue to attach the largest sign that says, You Say Which, to the top of the broomstick right below the very top kink in the branch. I wanted this piece to look a little whimsical, so I tilted the sign a bit so that it was not straight. I then attached a sign that says, like it's A, just a little ways underneath the top sign, again using hot glue to secure it in place, but this time I slanted it in the opposite direction of the top sign. Lastly, I attached a sign that says bad thing at the bottom, just right above the jute twine using hot glue and tilting it in the same direction as the top sign. Next, I used one of these cat tree toppers, one of these crow tree toppers, and one of these witch tree toppers all from Dollar Tree. I used some wire cutters to remove the bottom pieces where the topper sits down onto the tree. I used hot glue to attach the cat to the back of the top left corner of the bottom sign. I then attached the crow to the back of the top right corner of the middle sign. And finally, I attached the witch to the back of the top left side of the top sign. To finish up this project, I made a simple shoestring bow out of some more jute twine and used hot glue to attach it to the broomstick right in the middle of where I wrapped the burlap ribbon with the twine. I think this little witch's broom turned out absolutely adorable. I love the way the broom bristles look by using the burlap ribbon, and I think the phrase is just too cute. And that's it for today's Halloween Decor DIY projects, y'all. Thank you for watching, and I really, truly hope y'all enjoyed these fun and spooky ideas. Let me know in the comments below which one of these projects was your favorite. I think my hands-down favorite is the Flamingo Vultures. I can't wait to make some more of these little guys next year. If you decide to give any of these projects a try, I would absolutely love to see your recreations. You can tag me over on Instagram, and I will leave my handle in the description box below. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a little while. I have tons of fun DIY inspiration on the way. And remember, Halloween is just around the corner, so get crafty and have a fantastic day. I'll see y'all next time.